Grandstand Football. ABC Grandstand's Footy Finals. NRL. G'day and welcome to Grandstand's online presentation, Finals Flashback. I'm Luke Pentony with the Sydney Roosters preparing for Sunday's NRL Grand Final where they'll meet Manly. It is fitting somewhat that we reflect on their most recent appearance in a season decider back in 2010. The Roosters, under the coaching of Brian Smith, finished sixth at the end of the regular season, but three straight wins in the playoffs, including an epic 19-15 defeat of West Tigers in Golden Point extra time, saw the Bondi Junction-based club advance to the grand final. St George Illawarra, with Wayne Bennett at the helm, claimed the minor premiership, and after a comfortable 28-0 win over the Sea Eagles, the Dragons progressed to the grand final when they pipped the Tigers 13-12. A crowd of just over 82,000 filled the Olympic Stadium on the first Sunday in October, and behind the microphone hosting Grandstand's coverage was David Morrow. 30 weeks of rugby league comes down to 90 minutes. The 90 minutes in front of us. 40 before half time. A break and then another 40 to see who's crowned the Premiers for this year. Tony Archer is in the middle of the field. The Dragons are in a huddle. Someone's giving them some last moment instructions. Not quite sure what the instruction is. Scotty Campbell out there, Warren. He was the trainer with you in Newcastle. A victory today, and he has quite a remarkable little uh, uh, achievement to tap onto his uh, CV. He'll have been the trainer with three different winning premiership sides. What a bad effort. Well, if they win, he will, yeah. yeah. That's true. Bulldogs, Newcastle, and uh, possibly Dragons. You think it's a bit early, David, from you for a couple of bars of when the Saints go marching in? No one. A bit premature. Yes. What do you think, Craig? Oh, I think it's a little premature. OK, well, I think, well, uh, I think it's extremely out. premature. But we'll let the players have a bit of a go first, eh? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> There's the go, whistle. Go. The grand final's underway, and Salad kicks it deep into Roosters' territory. It's taken by Carney. Here comes Payer, and Payer's first run comes to an end 11 metres out from his own goalpost. They play it to Friend, and he uprows to Riles, and Riles against his former club, runs straight and hard, and he's tackled 21 metres out from the goalpost, right in the centre of the field. It's played to Perrett. Perrett goes for a gallop out of dummy half. He's tackled 29 out from his own goal line. 20 in from touch, right in front of our broadcast position on the western side of the field, taking it up as Miles, and Miles has picked up and backslammed into the turf in a heavy hit. 15 metres out from halfway. And the, they haven't even used the last play here. There's a kick from Pierce. It'll go all the way to the dead ball line. Boyd watches it. Over oh. the dead ball line it goes. And the Dragons will get their first uh, set of six as uh, a starting point at the 20 metre line. The Dragons enter the field. That was a great kick. Just a fraction too long. But it was a terrific range finder. I think it only over, over went by about a half a metre. And now the Dragons bring the ball back for their first run. And Costigan's going to play it. About five out from his own goal line. Young goes from dummy half. Oh, and Wayman's first run. Seizing drop the ball. And the Roosters have got a turnover. And Friend and Wayman come to a, a almost trade blows. Six to go. Here go the Chooks. First mistake of the match being made by the Dragons. Kenny Dow runs out of dummy half. He'll play it 12, 20 metres out. They go to the left to Pierce. He uploads to Miles. Miles comes down the centre. And Miles gets a pass away that's knocked on, which I believe, by the Roosters. And the Dragons come up with it through the lock board. Jeremy Pierce. A loose pass, I think it was thrown at the feet of Pierce, but I'll uh, I'll have to have another check, it may have been Minicello out over on that left hand side of the field but it wasn't a pass that was a good one in these conditions and so an error by uh, by both sides. Well, great opportunity lost there, they, they weren't composed in their attack, there was confusion and they're off the hook, the Dragons and they're going to make bird here, they're punched up to halfway, up the middle third as they take the ball over the halfway, and here goes Young charging out of dummy half, and he gets a shoulder charge for his trouble from Miles. He'll get up and play it, 42 metres out on the goal line. It comes to Saud, and Saud goes to the air, getting underneath it is BJ Lolua. Plenty of pressure on the youngster, he takes it, he's hammered. He'll play it 12 out from his own goal line. Good option from Saud, a short bomb. He shortened it up so they could compete. 
and put pressure on, well diffused. And now Minicello out of dummy half. He got a pass away at the very last moment to Sean Kenny Dell. He's chased and put down by Hornby and Cooper. He'll play at 22 out from his own goal line. He plays at the Pierce, charging onto the ball. And a good strong run here from Perrett comes to an end. 15 short of the halfway line. 20 in from touch. Ball goes back to the centre of the park as the ball goes from Pierce to Carney. Carney runs across field. He's been chased across field. He's put down. Five his own side of halfway. 10 in from touch. The ball's played and this time it guns from Anasta. Away it goes to Pierce to Payer. And Payer tries to go straight over the top of Young. He's unsuccessful. He'll play it just inside the Dragons half. Last play. They come to the left and Carney puts a little grubber kick in. Back against the, the grain it goes. And racing through and picking it up as Cooper. Pierce was coming through at 100 miles an hour. He then realised that the referee was calling him offside and he had no play on Cooper and wisely he let Cooper fall on the loose ball and the Dragons have got it 35 out from their goal. Post. It's a quick start to the game. Both sides just furling each other out and a few nerves there. We've already seen a couple of mistakes in the opening minutes of the game and look at the Dragons straight down that middle third of the field through the bog. That was a, one of the trick shots I talked about from Smith there. The kick back behind the ruck. And he pierced called out of the play, as you said, David, for being in front of the kicker. Smith takes the ball ahead for the Dragons. He's got to within 38 metres of the uh, of the Roosters line. He's 20 metres in from touch. Last play coming up for the Dragons. Will they go left? Will they go right? They go to Saud. And Saud decides to, from the 40 metre line to pump it high in the air. And there's been a confusion between Leilua and also Minicello. In the end, Leilua, the youngster's done wonderfully well. His fullback left him posted. He had to turn and look at his own goal line. But he took the ball well. And gee, I thought for a moment that the, the more experienced fullback should have called that ball. Warren and not left at the young kid playing his yeah. third first grade game on the wing. Well, it looks like they've targeted him because of his inexperience. But he's come up trumps twice now. Two in a row. Bombs. And he's fielded them well. Ball comes to the right, and they send the ball to Kenny Dale, and he's going to play the ball about 12 his own side of halfway. 15 metres in from touch. We've had four and a half minutes of the grand final. Nil all the school line. A bad pass. Well picked up by Carney, who almost goes through, and he's taken in a very heavy tackle. A metre or so short of the halfway line. Hit of it being high, so the Roosters supporters from Bo Scott. Last play, kick from Pierce. He kicks it away from Boyd. Boyd will let that bounce and bounce and run into touch, and the Dragons will get a scrum feed 10 metres out from their goal line. Well, good, two good kicks. Oh, I think for that tackle. No, that's all right. Yeah, just look at the replay. That was a good kick. Um, found touch, 10 metre scrum. Dragons will have the ball. They'll be under pressure. They'll be looking for a big hit here. The Roosters will try and dislodge something here if they can. But nil all the scoreline. And both sides walking slowly to this. Uh, to this scrum, a fair bit of nervous energy has been burned off. Yeah. We've only had, what, you know, five and a half minutes of play, but it's been frenetic so far in the grand final. Now Saud feeds the scrum, and the Dragons decide to run the ball to the centre of the park, and they've got the ball, about 15 out to their own goal line. Gaznir is slowly getting to his feet after the tackle from Miles. The crowd are booing. They thought Gaznir was being held down too long. Here comes Wayman. He's tackled about 16 metres out from his own goal line, and they'll get the penalty. Well, that's fair enough, too. Very, very slow. They held Wayman, tried to prevent him getting a quick play of the ball. So an off-the-hook or a pressure reliever, anyway, for the Dragons. And Wayman's got a little bit of a, a welt round the right eye. I hope he hasn't had a, got a finger in the eye, or accidentally, I hope that's what all that's happened. There's a payer and... A, there's another one, and Nasta heavily involved. Was it the second push down? He's Wayman is a target for their defence. They've got to make sure he doesn't lift the side with his yardage running. And that, that means that he's going to be met ferociously with quite a number of players when he runs. Great run from Bo Scott as he takes it up after they take him the play down to the 40 metre line, their own side of halfway. They're on the halfway as they take it towards the 40 metre line inside the Roosters half. And it's Costigan who'll play the ball. About 45 metres out in the centre of the park. And they'll go to the, the left as Young just runs across field. He gets it away to Hornby. Second man play away. It goes then. Away it went to Boyd. Oh, it goes to Morris. Morris sprinting down the left wing. He throws it back on the infield. It hits the deck. Touch, touch. Says he didn't go into touch. They'll play the ball 25 metres out. Ball has played to Cooper. Away it comes to Cray. Cray decides to have a crack. He races straight and hard. He's tackled 10 metres out. Dragons on the attack. Hornby goes to the right. Away it goes to Saud. Saud puts the kick in. And Gaznir takes it and scores. Did he get it down? Did he get it down? Well, that 
that's the big question. That's the $64,000 question. Did Gasly... he get it down before it went dead, Craig? That's the question. Oh, body yeah. language tells you yes, yes, yes. I think so. I well, think he... that Gasly may have caught this, but he certainly caught it. Well, and I've got a feeling he's put it down, and I think it's OK. He's just got to be on side, Craig, I think. I don't think there's any trouble. He's on side. He's a mile on side. Yeah, Jamie Sowd's up on the, on the 10 metre line. Oh, what a beautiful kick. And what a lovely run where he cuts in field and gets the inside running. Oh, oh yeah, that's fine. Yes. I just have a look. He's, he gets the inside running on the number two. Lalua, Joseph Lalua or BJ Lalua, and uh, bangs it down. It's a try from Mark Gasney. Well, you said he might have some influence on the game, Craig. He put him in front 4-0. Very easy decision for Billy Harrigan to make. Gee, that was well worked. It was a terrific kick from Soward, and it was earmarked for Gaznier the moment it left his boot. Gaznier knew it. He came running an angle run in towards the ball, caught it superbly, and grounded it. It was a beautifully executed try from St George Illawarra. I think the key to it was the way Gaz cut back in field, and he was just able to cut it out of the air before it got far enough to uh, Lalua to defuse it. He's defused two bombs very successfully, but that one was never going to reach him because Gaz cut it out of the air before it got to him. So, um, and with a great leap too. It was a terrific leap, but what a wonderfully, uh, like a pinpoint uh, precision kick. Here we go, Dave. Sour 20 metres in, kicks the ball straight over the black dot, and the Dragons are in front by a converted try. Eight minutes gone in the grand final. St George Illawarra 6, Eastern Suburbs nil. And I tell you what, I tell you what, there's been an error here, Warren. When Morris went down that, that left touchline and dropped the ball back on the inside, would you believe his foot yeah. was on the touchline? Should have been a scrum feed to the Roosters. Oh, that's a terrible error. Well, yeah, he had his foot on the on the touchline. Morris, that's absolutely right on replay, David. Well, I watched the. Uh, what I was watching was the uh, the touch judge because I thought Morris was going horribly close to the touch line and on a greasy field, I anticipated him being thrown into touch. Well, that information wasn't available at the time. No. It was play on, wasn't it? Great run from Wayman. It was a kick-off that was a good one. It had to bounce. They couldn't... It, it, it came down around the goalpost. Young had to jump and leap for it to avoid conceding a line dropout. Wayman managed to take the ball out of the 10-metre line, but the, the defence of the Roosters has done a pretty good job here for the time being to keep the Dragons to within 20 metres of their goal line on this set, thanks to a great kick-off. But Boyd runs across field, tries to cut back on the inside, and he almost got away. Great tackle from Anasta. Last play, ball fed now to Soward, and Soward's kick, it's a booming kick. It goes downfield, and it's knocked on by Lalua, not back, says the referee. Wow. Well... He was facing his own goal line, but gee, the ball did go upfield, but I suppose, Warren, you give him the benefit of the doubt. A touchy, in fact, the referee, Shane Hayne, he had a good view of it. Oh, gee. Well, I think that's a knock-on. Yeah, I think he <laughs> could have gone the other way. Could yeah, have I think that is definitely a knock-on. I wonder if they're aware that there's been a, a, an injustice to the Roosters already that produced yeah. that try. You just wonder whether the guys out there are aware of it. Well, it's evened up now, Warren, because they got one back there. It no, no, that hasn't evened up. <laughs> no, I know that, that, but I mean... <laughs> But here comes Orbison, his first touch of the night, or the afternoon, or evening. 45 out from the Dragons line, 10 in from touch. It goes to Pierce on the last play. They run the ball. A long ball goes away to Anasta. He puts a grubbing kick in that's easily fielded in the end by Nightingale, diving forward, and he was under some pressure as Linnett came flying through at him. And, uh, of course, with his greasy feel, he had to make sure he got down low, but he did a good job as the Dragons are on their own 30. And out of dummy half, here goes Soward, and Soward runs it back within nine of the halfway. It's a rare sight, Warren. Soward having to play the ball. Yeah, it is a rare sight. Well, well, having run a run from, from dummy it. half, I think, is the rare sight. There's some impressive runs coming here, uh, although here's a mistake from the Dragons, I think, from Costigan. Costigan. There's some impressive metres being made by the Dragons' big men. That, that to me, is significant. The early stages here, they lead by six. They've well, had to come out of their own end, and there's already some the impressive Roosters, runs. The Roosters have got to slow their attack speed by getting some numbers around the ball carrier. And it can be done, but it requires effort, and it all takes energy, And which, uh, in the end, you've only got a certain amount of energy, and it, it, it all comes at a cost, but it's the harder you work in defence, the, the easier it is 
it, it, it's easier if you work hard, if we'll put it that way. If you work softly, you're going to have to work a lot harder in the long run because the ball movement will beat you. Minicello has the ball. That could have easily been a penalty against Riles too, by the way, when he lost the ball, Costigan. Out of dummy half, going for a runner's Kenny Dell. And he's shot down 45 metres out on the goal line. As the Dragons enter the field. It's fed to Carney. He floats across field. He sends it on to Payer. And Payer comes steaming down the centre. He's tackled about 32 metres out now from the Dragons' goal line. Dragons lead 6-0. Friend at dummy half. He fires a pass at Riles. He almost dropped it. He did well, though, the big fella. He got it back to Pierce. And Pierce running across field. He gets it away to Anasta. Anasta gets it on to Friend. Friend goes through a hole. He got away from a couple of defenders before he's put down. 15 metres out from the Dragons line. 15 in from touch. Pierce at dummy half. He fires the pass. It goes to Carney. Carney gets a, gets a pass away then to Orbison, who's taken in a great tackle there. And it was one that was made by Cooper. Nine metres out. Last play. Pierce goes to the line. Away to Minicello. Minicello loses the ball. It's gone loose. And it's going to be a handover to the Dragons a couple of metres out in their own goal. That's well defended. Gee, Jeremy Smith was there. Gee, there was a great <laughs> tackle by Cooper in all of that. I'll tell you what, there's even a... There's even, I can see why the Roosters were saying wasn't that knocked on, and it's probably got a case for the fact that Smith actually knocked the ball out of Minicello's hands, which could have easily been construed a knock-on against the Dragons. As now Morris goes for a run out of dummy heart, and then he's picked up and he's driven backwards. <laughs> now, can you tell me why that isn't a penalty warrant? when if you do it and take the men back in the end goal area, it is. Great run from Buck Ray, who takes the ball 20 metres downfield. That mystifies me, that rule. Here goes the Wayman, charging onto the ball, up over the halfway he goes. He'll play the ball about 48 metres out on the Roosters line. They've got to rest the play the ball speed of the Dragons. Now it's with Saud. A long ball comes away to Boyd. He gets a pass wide to Gaznia. Gaznia goes to the line. He kicks ahead. The ball goes into Poor. touch. That wasn't what Gaznia wanted there. It, that was... a. Um, a play that produced nothing, a loss of possession and five-yard gain. So that wasn't what he wanted. He wanted the parallel kick yeah, down, that... down, punch towards the in-goal area. He just said sorry to say it. <laughs> it's uh, 16, no, 26 and a half minutes to go in the first half. And St George Illawarra lead by six points to nil in the grand final of 2010. We've got a rooster on one knee there. Just having a look. Can't pick up his number. Just think, doing his shoelace is up. It is Minicello? it No, it's Miles. The 11. I don't think why you an thought injury. it might be a Minicello. You just thought that was a one yeah, and not a little. one. Yeah. It's, it's Miles, you're right. It's no injury problem, though. He's just doing the boots up. Now, the Roosters with the ball on its Leilua. He's going to play the ball about 29 metres out from his own goalpost. Dragons in front, 6-0. The ball comes to Miles, and Miles runs across field, and he's easily put down by some solid Dragons defence in the form of Smith and Young. 15 metres their own side of halfway. It comes to Riles, and Riles is picked up and put down on a heavy tackle. About 10 his own side of halfway, right in the middle of the mess. It's about the only way you can describe the middle of the field at the moment. As they go to the left side of the field, quick hands from Pierce found to Nasta, and Nasta is quickly tackled and put down just inside the opposition's half. The ball is fed to Pierce. Baggett comes to Payer and Payer comes charging down the centre and loses the ball and I think you'll find the Dragons have got this. What are they going to rule here? Knocked on by, by, by Dragons. First off Dragons. Video, knocked on first by Dragons. Dragons. He's ruled the first knock-ons by the Dragons. Well. It's not popular. It's an interesting decision. call, isn't it? Let's have a look, boys. It pulled out of the... How can it be knocked on by them? It's been well. He's. Oh, that's interesting. That is an interesting call. Oh, it's offside too, just quietly, to a player in front. That's knocked on by the Dragons. I thought a Dragon player yeah. touched it. Could have been a penalty. They're lucky. Well, it could have been under that ruling, but it wasn't knocked on. <laughs> they got one wrong. Here comes Miles. He pulled his arm away, Warren. Yeah, Not exactly. Just, that's why he didn't touch the ball, Smith. Anyway, Mitch Orbison's got the ball, and they're going to play it 39 metres out from the Dragons line. 21 metres in from touch. Friends at dummy half. He fires a pass at Payer, and Lapini Payer again, charging onto the ball. He started the game, and he's going to get up and play it about 31 metres out from the Dragons lineup. And we're watching uh, the first of the interchange players about to come on. Waria Hargreaves, there's a ball out wide, sees that Linnett go to the line, and he's tackled about 25 metres out from the Dragons line. 10 in from touch. He plays it to Minicello. Away it goes through the hands. It comes to Carney. Carney again again, floats across field, he gets a pass away then to Kenny Dale, who tries to get a pass back on the inside, but Cooper comes in over the top and says, you're not going anywhere last play, it's fed to Carney he puts the ball up high for auction that'll finish up going very close to the goal line and plucking the ball out of the air and getting up to score, I think you'll find is BJ Lamour, he's lost the ball has it been stripped back, and then the, and Master, in chasing ahead may have scored a try 
Now they've got to work out whether Lewis knocked this on, whether he scored, whether he was stripped, and after he's stripped, that uh, Inasta, in keeping alive, has put the ball down just inside the in goal area. The, ro the roosters, possible. yeah, the roosters. I think I think they've scored. It's crossfield bomb right to left. Let's have a look. That's whether he's well. That's no try. That's a knock on too, isn't it? I think he's lost the ball. I think he's lost Jamie the ball Sowers, forward. He's planted it on Jamie Sowers' knee, which should get off. He's lost the ball, Warren, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, which constitutes a loss of possession, one would think. Or has Jamie Sowers kicked it out of his legs? What? Now, he might construe that Jamie Sowers has stripped him by kicking the ball. Well, he might too. Billy might say, well, you've kicked it out of his grasp. And it's available to whoever pounces on it. And it'll be on that try to an Aston. Yeah, it's possible. It's a, it's, it's going to be a bit of a conundrum for Billy it's Harrigan Billy to sort Harrigan, it out. It's whether Billy Harrigan construes that an, uh, Sauer played at the ball. If he said Sauer didn't play at the ball... And well, I he's, think he's looking at the grounding now, yeah. which well, let's, let's tends, say a try. tends to indicate a try to the Roosters. BJ yeah. Lalua definitely lost it, but was it stripped by Sauer's knees, by Sauer playing at the ball? The referee says it was. Wow. Try to announce them. Wow. Well, that could have gone either way. Well, the only way he could rule that, Warren, as he said, and I, he's, he's ruled that Sowd has played at the ball, and therefore Lalua hasn't lost it. That's what he's ruled. Well, ben Hornby's now with Shane Hayne. Yeah, and he's just it's... getting an explanation. I reckon that's what the explanation is, that Bill's construed that Sowd played at the ball, and as a result, oh, he's he played ruled it. it a strip. Yeah, well, I think he played it. He stuck his knees under it deliberately to try and stop him from scoring. He was in the act of banging the ball down for a try. So he's ruled that he's kicked it out or kneaded out of the hands of the, 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 the rooster and um, an Astor's pouncer was available then to whoever pounced on it. But as it trickled towards the dead wall line and an Astor was Johnny on the spot. He's a good bomb, good bomb from Carney. I, I thought uh, Leilua secured it and I thought he was going to go over for a try. Well, that's what I thought. And then I realised that with the... The frenetic way in which they were chasing through. Here's Carney with the attempted conversion, and he's missed it. And so the Dragons are still in front by six points to four. And you knew straight away, Warren, that, that Lalua hadn't scored, just with the body language and the, the speed with which the Roosters tried to chase hard up the ball. And that, again, and the fact that the, the Dragons were trying to get back there to prevent the, uh, the try being scored. Two tries from kicks. Yeah, he's ruled that Sowers kicked Product the ball out tough, of his arm. Tough goal line defence, both sides. Kicks very prominent. There's an offside Gee, play. Was the, that was uh, Costigan, a, a metre in front of the kick. He's a long way in front. Here's Jar Ra Ra Har Hargreaves on the field. He'll play the ball about 12 metres out from his own goal line. He'll get up and play it, and he plays it to Perrett, and Perrett runs across field, and he's tackled, and he'll play the ball 20 out from his own goal line and 15 in from touch. He struggles to his feet. He plays it to Friend. It comes to Pierce. Away to Carney. Carney running across field. He's going to be chased and put down, and a good tackle by Gaznier, about 29 metres out from his own goal line. They come back to the centre of the park, and uh, they move the ball just outside their own 30-metre line. They're on that eastern scrum line as Minicello plays it to Friend, and he gets the ball onto Riles, and Riles is going to be playing it. Nine metres his own side of halfway. Last play against the Roos. The ball comes away now to Pierce, and Pierce is going to kick. He's going to kick away from the wing of Morris and away from Boyd, and in the end, both of them say, well, let it bounce. It'll go over the dead ball line, and the Dragons will restart the action with uh, the optional kick back at their own 20-metre line. I think Pierce was trying to encourage Morris to, to get to bring that one back, and uh, they would have contained St George pretty deep in their own territory there. It was well left by Morris. He, he could read that. They had enough on it to go dead. Nightingale brings the ball back. He'll play it 30 out from his own goal line. He's going from dummy half. I'll tell you what, Ooh. the hooker Young was certain that he got his side a penalty there because he reckons Anasta got out before acceptance. And now a, knocked off, a ball's knocked on out there by Bo Scott. And the Roosters get another opportunity to have a crack at the Dragons. Ball comes to Friend. Away it goes then to Miles. And Miles is going to be playing it. 30 metres out on the Dragons goal line. Friend at dummy half. He goes to the left. Away it goes to Riles. And Riles is put down. 20 metres out in the goal line at the Dragons end of the field. 15 metres in from touch. Friends at dummy half. They'll come the open side. The pass goes to Carney. Inside ball to Hargreaves. And he tries to bust them up down the centre. He's tackled 15 metres out from the Dragons line. In a dummy half is Friend again. He sends the ball through the hands. It goes to Pierce. And Pierce gets the ball away to Orbison. Orbison will go straight through. Orbison will score. Oh, what a good run, Craig. Uh, it's a wonderful run. They're dangerous. 
you give them field position, these roosters, and they will bite you. they got some tries in them, and the Dragons did that. They coughed up the ball, and the, the Roosters have made them pay. I think they're worried about Pierce there. If you see this play go left to right here from the midfield, I think young Pierce, they know he's got footwork, and I think there was a bit of concentration on him here as he comes. Let's have a look. And Cooper oh. missed him badly. Yeah. I'd like to see this one end on, but it was a good angle run left to right. I thought they were running on too much of an angle and they'd run out of room. But uh, very strong, Orbison. He dragged would-be defenders into the end goal with him. So well, I hope we see an end on shot of that one. It'll be well worth the view. Yeah, it's Cooper's missed tackle that's allowed Orbison to Which score. Which is strange. Cooper And Cooper be, would be very much worried about Sean Kenny Dowell, I can tell you. Because Sean Kenny Dowell's been such a, such a try scorer for them in... Uh, the latter part of this season and that would be his role to keep Sean Kenny Dow quite today and in so doing well Orbison we know running as, as a right centre he's very very dangerous we not, will we see an end on Craig? Well we might see one we haven't seen after one yet the, after the goal after kick after the kick you might we yeah. may see it Kenny's posed over it Johnny Wilkinson style here it goes from the right touch line here's the kick from Carney that goes across the face of the uprights and he misses the kick, and so the Roosters are in front by two points. They lead the Dragons eight points to six. It was great work, as you said, Warren, Here we go. from Here Mitchell. We go. Mitchell Pierce did so much of this, created well, some doubts. Well, he straightens up off the right foot, you're right. Oh, yeah, there's a bad miss there, boy, by Cooper. And here's an end on one. We watch Cooper, the number four. Oh, he goes in. He, he was worried about Pierce, Cooper. He was sucked inwards when, Cooper, uh, when Pierce straightened off the right leg. It sucked... Uh, Cooper inwards, and that was all it took to give Orbison a head start. Now Hargreaves to get up and play the ball. Ten out from their own goal line as Riles brings it ahead, and Riles has taken solidly about 19 metres out from his own goal line. In the centre of the park, 18 and a half to go in the first half, and the Roosters lead by eight points to six as they bring the ball out of their own end. The Roosters and Pryor's out there for the Dragons, and he's involved in that tackle on the Roosters' 30 metre line. They go to the left through Minicello, and Minicello is tackled. About 12 his own side of halfway. Friends at dummy half. He'll go to the left. He runs across field, and then he tried to do something. He got oh, away from the tackle. Oh, penalty, surely. And there is the referee going to give a penalty. Well, that's their first penalty, the Roosters, and it's going to... He might, might have tickled him a bit in the head, but it was well worth the getting of it because they're going to go on the attack from halfway here. So if he can wear a hit in the head and get his side a penalty... Oh, it's not much in it. It's a grab and a pull. Oh, that's not a... No, that shouldn't have been a penalty. That, that is a terrible... That, that's not a headshot, really. That's, that's not a penalty. It's a draped arm that did very little damage. He hit him on the shoulder and then it slipped up, and that's not a... Oh, no, it, that's it, a it, shocking decision. It is. Here's Hargreaves now it's charging onto the ball, though, but it's given the Roosters a great opportunity here as the ball comes to Carney. Away it goes to Pierce, and he uploads to Riles, and Riles comes steaming down the centre. Fiends out there as well for the Dragons, and Riles will play the ball about 19 metres out. They go one side. Now Minicello decides to go back to the left, and he fires a pass at right Miles, and Miles is tackled about nine metres out on the goal line. They're on the attack here, the Roosters. They lead by two points. They're about six metres out. It comes to Friend. He offers it up to Pierce. They go to the left to Carney, and Carney will he be running out and he tried to get a pass away that looked horribly forward, but getting the ball then to play lower than the referee has ruled it forward, and that is the correct decision. Now Archer right on the spot. Oh. Roosters fans are still celebrating. They don't know that it's been called back. They'll find out shortly. No try. Yeah. They were trying to they were trying to push Carney into touch. You know, they were lucky. They were lucky that he didn't. Well, they, they don't go forward. I'll tell you what, they were, oh, well, we got a bad angle there. I'd like to see the... Gee, I reckon that's all right. Pass is probably all right. It just looked forward because Leilua had to go upstream oh, to pick the ball up. And they won't go upstairs yeah. on forward passes. Oh, well, well. The Lua looked as if he was standing in front of him, Warren. I think that's what's given everyone the impression that the ball had gone forward. Which is a, a <laughs> tactical or a technical error with a lot of young wingers. They get in front of the ball. They don't allow their ball players the room. They stampede their ball players. But that was all right, I thought, on the Eagle camp. Now, here's Pryor bringing the ball back for the Dragons. He'll play the ball 25 out from his own goal line as they run the ball out of dummy half through Nightingale. He's going to play the ball about 35 metres out from his own goal line. 
The Roosters lead by eight points to six. As the outer dummy half, here comes Young. And Young runs straight and hard. And he's tackled five, his own side of halfway. Last tackle coming up for the Dragons. As Fiends at dummy half, he'll look for Saud. He's found him now. And Saud under pressure puts a good kick in. It's going to find a Minicello. I'll tell you what, Minicello stopped and started. Had a hiccup and finally got the ball to take it on the full. And we've seen Minicello drop those before. But <laughs> yeah, but lack of field position forced Saud to kick long there. And that makes it an easy get. There's a no pressure get for your fullback Minicello. It, it, it sort of relied on him making an error with a catch, which is a bit hard to do with a professional fullback. You shouldn't drop anything that you're not being contested from. Pierce for. runs to the line and he's tackled 42 metres out now from the Dragons line. He gets up and plays it. Here goes Minicello out of dummy half. He goes to the right. It comes to Kenny Dale. He tries to get away from a couple of defenders, including Cooper. He'll play the ball 30 metres out on the goal line. Last play. They uh, dummy to the, at the right. Then they kick to the left. And the ball is charged down. The kick is charged down and picked up by Jeremy Smith. He gets it away to Pryor. Pryor's up over the halfway line. He got a pass away to Cooper. And Cooper's sprinting downfield. A team chased by Miles. And also being chased by Orbison, he'll get up and play it about 12 metres out now from the Roosters goal line, it's played to Morris Morris gets it away to Saud, Saud in turn gets it away to Fiend, Fiend uploads to Hornby, away it goes to Gaznier and Gaznier tries to get in and around a couple of defenders and the penalty will go against the Roosters because they were all offside on that far side. Well, what do you do Warren, do you take the two here and level the score with the penalty goal or do you tap and run? I think you, you keep the ball and you keep your fur position they're behind Mm -hmm. Well, the Roosters will probably... Are they, are they going to go for goal? If they are, oh, I reckon that's a... Yeah. Well, I'll be blowed. Well, they, yeah. I I, the they're get the, if he can kick it dead, they'll get it back. But I take your point, they'll also lose the field position. But, because you know, because it'll, be a, it'll be a 20-metre line drop. It'll be a 20-metre drop out, won't it, if, they, can, if he kicks his dead? Can you imagine Alfie Langer doing this? No, he'd, he'd be gone. He'd be, he'd be long able, gone. He'd be in for a try by now. <laughs> scored over his head, through his legs. Yes, yeah, somehow. He'd find a way. <laughs> he wouldn't have mucked around and had a kick at goal. <laughs> yeah. It's an interesting, you, it's an interesting could call. Could you imagine Andrew Johns of doing it? I don't think so. Uh, I'm just wondering what Andrew's thinking. He's about six metres... Well, here's Saud. Well, well, I'm surprised. I've got to say I'm surprised. Having a shot at penalty goal from 20 metres out and nine metres in. So it's no gimme. Here he comes. Here's the kick from Saud. He's hit it, and he's hit it away from the post, but it has gone dead. And so play will restart with the dropout from the centre of the 20 metre line. See, when he hit it, I thought it was going to get there. Well, it makes the decision to play on and <laughs> keep full position a little better, doesn't it, now? Ben's that now. They want a line drop kick that can go 70 metres here. Well, it's a, uh, not a line yeah. drop kick, a um, 20. Well, it's the Nasta who's kicking it. It's not a bad one. And it's taken on the full by Nightingale, and he immediately offloads to Pryor. The Roosters can probably count themselves a bit lucky, Warren, that it was Smith and Pryor that pounced on that rebound, and not Boyd and Morris. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, Morris is away. Because there, there was daylight between the, the, the two uh, the two Dragons players and any other Rooster player. It's just that the uh, the Roosters had time to get back and, and stop the Dragons from scoring the try. They've got the ball 40 metres out on the Roosters line. They play the ball and they go to the right. Fiend sends it away. Soud uploads to, uh, to Poe Scott and Scott's going to be asked to play it. About 30 metres out on the goalpost at the Roosters end of the field. They'll come to the left. The ball goes across to Young. Second man play to Hornby and Hornby sends it out wide. I think it was knocked down. Was it knocked yeah, down I by so. Rooster? Be and six to go. Go. Yeah. And Kenny Dow went for the intercept and he wasn't quite in the position to do it. And as a result, he's knocked it down and given the Dragons a great opportunity. 18 metres out in the centre of the park. He almost didn't throw the, throw the pass. He realised that Kenny Dow, what Kenny Dow was up to then as the ball is taken ahead by Jeremy Smith and a good strong run comes to an end about eight metres out. Fiends in at dummy half. They go to the right. They play a second man play that finishes up here with Saud. And Saud floating across field. He's still going as Saud. And he's running straight across field. And then he's put down by Linnett as he tried to run around all of the roosters and couldn't do it. It comes back to the centre of the park. It goes to Gaznia. And Gaznia trying to find a little hole in the centre of the field. He can't find one. He's 10 metres out on the goal line. Almost in front of the, the goal sticks they are. 10 metres out. The ball goes to the left. It goes to Young. He plays the ball. And the front man is, the, the front man is Cray. And Cray loses the ball. And they'll get up and play it here. The Roosters nine out on their own goal line. Well, they weathered the storm. They weathered it. Uh, they weathered two sets there. 
on their line, the Roosters. The six to go. They've got out of jail. They've got the ball and they've got to play out of trouble now without a loss. And Miles is going back. Well, he's gone back to the end goal here. I thought he was going to go off for a moment. I thought that's... Well, there was a hit on an unmarked man. I think it was on Cooper. Well, he is coming off. I'm not sure whether that's by design, whether yeah. he was the man they wanted to take off, because Nua Salah's coming on. He rarely comes off to the Miles. Now a kick by the Roosters downfield. They're looking for a 40-20 here, but by the, the fullback, Darius Boyd, got back in a great position. He's got back to his 30. He looks up, and he charges ahead, and he's going to play it 12 metres out from his own goal line. And they're just looking at Miles down there. He doesn't look well. No, he doesn't. Not sure what, what happened there. He got a horror. Whether he's come into the game with an injury and... That's uh, and that's it. Well, Smithy reckoned they were injury free. Yeah. I heard Smithy talk and he said, We've got no problems, which, you know. Inside ball from Hornby finds Cooper, and Cooper's going to play the ball about 45 metres out from the goal line. The uh, the Roosters are in front. Ten minutes to go in the first half by eight points to six as Wayman, who's back on the park, charges downfield, and a good run from Wayman. Cool. And, and a, a man came flying in. Daniel Conn. That's got to be a that, flop. I think, That's got to yeah. be a flop. That's I'm, a, I'm not, well, I'm not convinced still... he hasn't hit uh, Wayman high here uh, on the way down, if you, if you take my point. Conn's come in. I well, reckon there could be head contact on Wayman. That, that bears out what I've been saying. Yeah, like they're going to take take their spearhead out if they can. They're going to really give it to him in numbers. And there's a, there's a prowler, uh, more or less a prowler tackle here. He was well held. He's held up. And they're waltzing with him, and someone's come in awfully late. And I think there's a swinging arm well, in there. Well, there's a big swinging arm which has missed, but I don't know that the knees have missed because he's gone over the top of him. Con, he's not well, Wayman. Well, if, the, if, if they can't start penalising knees now after the the business uh, recently with uh, on Lottie DeCoury. Who was that that screamed in? Scott? Bo Scott? No, Jeremy Smith. Jeremy, Jeremy Smith. Smith. He's in Disneyland, Wayman. I don't think he is. I can tell you, I'll explain it to you. Yeah. It's going to be a penalty. Found in the swing arm. He did make contact. It's yeah. going to be a penalty. The pack is on the court. Same report. Well, I'll tell you something, Craig, or what I saw. And it was only, only a little thing. I reckon Wayman, Wayman, he might well be a lot worse than... You might be right. But Wayman looked at the trainer and said, do they have I, the replay yet? No, I didn't get him with knees. He got him with arm, all right. Yeah, he, he did hit him. Yeah, you're right. And he's, he's going to come off, Mick Wayman. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interchange. And those legs aren't walking a straight line. He's got a trainer under under each arm. That's not a great sight for Dragons fans. Big uh, big loss if he can't come back. Um, yardage man. They're going for the line. Different plan here. Change of attack. Maybe 30 metres out, Warren. He doesn't think he can kick it. <laughs> Or is it because it's close to half time and they think they can put a try on? And Con again, I should say, Nuasala this time came out of the line and put a good hit on the, on the big fella Cray. Now Pryor takes it ahead for the Dragons. The Dragons with a set right underneath the goalpost. In a dummy half is Fiend. He goes across field. He throws a dummy. Then he decides to go a crack on his own. And he's gone within five metres of the goal line. They're on the attack again here, the Dragons. They're trailing by two points. We're deep into the first half as the ball comes to the left to Hornby. Oh, and it went to Cray. And would you believe Cray's been hit again? And lost the ball. Have a look who did the tackle. Mitchell Pearce. What a tackle. A try saver and a ball winner. Have a look at this tackle from the halfback. Smithy reckons he's the best defensive half that he's ever had or ever seen or ever laid eyes on or something. Have a look at this, the little seven. How good's that? He's dispossessed him as well. Stopped him bodily with a, with a bear hug, for heaven's sake. Didn't have much body weight in it. Mm. Just strength of his arms and knocks the ball down. A couple of very uncharacteristic errors from St George Illawarra. They're up to five, Craig. Yeah. Five, three. Craig's Good. made two of them. Scott made one. I know that. They're, they're just, that's Wayman, the Wayman dropped the ball early. Yeah. I've got him. There's Wayman. Craig's two. Scott one. And... Uh, Costigan won. That's right, Costigan, didn't he, when he got up the yep. when it was really that yeah. So five three the errors. Now Dragons the crowd, five. The, 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 uh, the clouds have become very black overhead too. Oh we're gonna get some rain. Here's Anasta taking the ball back for the Roosters. He'll play the ball 18 metres out from his own goal line. Friend fires a pass. And they're a big defensive set here from the Dragons. They've aimed up here and they've restricted the Roosters to 20 metres so far. That's tackle four. They'd better get off him. Oh, otherwise they'll give a penalty. Well, if he gave a penalty at the other end, that, that, that should have been a penalty. And here's Pierce having a crack at a 40-20. I don't think he'll have the no, angle. No and angle. Boyd, 
Uh, he, that's what he was after, and Boyd read it well. Now Boyd gathers the ball up with the Dragons. He's chased by Pierce and put down by Pierce in a great tackle, 30 out from his own goal line. Going from dummy half now, there's lightning over the back. And uh, they've got to pass away to Morris. Gee, that looked horribly forward for mine. It is going to be forward. They're rattled. The Dragons are rattled at the moment. They are, they are rattled. They're at sixes yeah. and sevens. They've, they've got no shape. And uh, they're in trouble there, and they've, they've unhinged themselves. That's error six. And this is right in the middle of the field, 30 out. And I'll tell you, Mitchell Pearce is having a whale of a game for the Roosters at the moment. Now, now just so I got all the names right, that was a forward pass. Yeah, I I think it's a, from yeah, Morris to uh, Morris to Safi. Safi. Morris, Morris to Safi. Right but, right but Safi, I reckon, has caught with that. Yeah, I think he has too. Look, I, I'm why wasn't, line with uh, that. Why wasn't it a penalty? It should be a penalty. He, he was, was in an offside position, blatantly in an offside position. Anyway, we They've won't go to the down right. that road. Here they go, Minicello. He throws the dummy, goes on his own. He's going to be walked towards the sideline. And he's going to play it about five metres in from touch. 29 metres out. The ball is played now to Kenny Dale. And Kenny Dale goes back and across. And he's going to play it 20 metres out to the goal line. 15 metres in from touch. He'll play it to Friend. And Friend sends the pass to Pierce. And Pierce throws a long ball to Carney. Carney looks for an inside runner. And it's Kennedy who comes charging onto the ball. He'll play the ball about 12 metres out from the Dragons line. Right in the centre of the park. Roost is leading eight points to six and they come to the right then they go to the left and they switch it back to Carney and Carney sends a pass away it goes to Anasta Anasta tries to wriggle through and get a pass away to the left he can't do so he'll play the ball about eight metres out they're ten in from touch it's played to Linnett Linnett decides to have a crack on his own and uh, the former Dragons junior is tackled a couple of metres out on the goal line Lalu is a dummy half last play coming up for the Roosters it goes through the hands it comes now to uh, it comes across to Pierce it throws a long loopy pass that finishes up on the the hands of Perrick, who's hammered by Morris, and the Dragons get a hand over 20 metres out on their own goal line. That was a mistake from Pierce. Not sure who he was looking for then. I think the Roosters are trying to work out who he was trying to hit. That wasn't a good pass. No, no, it wasn't. It, he wanted someone to be on the end of it and running, but uh, that wasn't on. Jeez, there's a good hit. Yeah, Frank Paul Nuasalo has hit, the, has hit Benny Bray and he's lost it again. Well, they've sit. I think they think Benny Cray might be a little on the soft side and they're giving him a workout. They're putting on a tough show here. I, you know, I, I speculated that if anyone was going to get sent off in this grand final, it would be where Hargraves, the number 15. Oh, that ball's been knocked. That hasn't been lost by Cray. That has clearly been knocked out of his grasp by Perrett. Should be a penalty to the Dragons. Well, we scream about it all oh, no. year. You're right, David. That is... Now, we've got the answer before the scrum's been fed here. That's shocking. Should have been a penalty. You're and right. how did the touch judge miss that? Oh. I just can't work out what these touch judges get paid for when they miss simple things like that. Anyway, they've got the advantage of a very bad refereeing decision there, the Roosters, and they're going to play it 20 metres out. There's no way. Cray never lost that at all. It was punched out of his hands by Perrin. Ball comes to the right. It comes to Carney. Carney floats across field. Wrap around with Orbison. Then he holds it up for Kenny Dale. And Kenny Dale tries to run over the top of both Hornby. He'll play the ball 10 metres out in the goal line. It's played to Minicello. It comes to Carney. On it goes to Pierce. Pierce decides to throw a ball one way. Then he looks for another runner. He finds Anasta. And Anasta has taken ball and all. 11 metres out on the Dragons line. Friend at dummy half. They go to the left hand side now in Carney. And Carney throws a dummy. Carney's going to be put down. No, he's not. He gets it away to Pierce. Pierce gets it away to Linnett. And Linnett's put down. 13 metres out from the Dragons line. 10 metres in from touch. Four to go in the first half. Last play. Here comes the crossfield kick. And who's getting underneath it? There's a heap of players going for it. I reckon Hornby's gone above them all and taken an absolute screamer. A yeah, brilliant take, Hornby. Under pressure, right on the goal. And gee, it was a good kick. He's managed to, to keep into the field of play. Three and a half to go before the break, David. 8-6, the Roosters. What a game. Oh, that's the take. That's the take. The bomb defence of the year, that is. Pressure with a capital P, the Dragons are on. And now Safi runs the ball back for the Dragons. There was a stack of them there, wasn't it? <laughs> and he reeled it in. Warren. He won the, he won the, the catch. Now here's, the, here's Sound having a crack at a 40-20. Nah. He won't get there because Leilua got onto his bike and managed to scream back down that far side of the field. He runs it back. He runs it Sound. He runs it another two who's up there. Sound puts him down and so does Feen and the other defender was Gaznier. They're 15 short of the halfway line. They send it to Pierce. He sends the ball away out to the left-hand side. But the Dragons are up there again in numbers. 
and they're going to play the ball. Linnett it is. 15, his own side of halfway. Pierce gets a pass away to Friend, and Friend is hammered about six metres out from the halfway line. On the scrum line, on the eastern side of the field, Kennedy brings the ball down the centre of the park, and he's going to be put down 45 metres out on the Dragons line. Four tackles gone. Two and a half to go in the first half. The Dragons trail. The Roosters lead eight points to six. As the ball comes out now, to, uh, it went across to Carney, who fl- got a pass onto uh, Orbison, and Orbison is tackled about 31, 32 metres out on the goal line. Last play coming up. It's fed now towards Pierce. He puts up the high kick. It's going to come down about uh, five or six metres out and going above them all and taking them. Taking it was Nightingale, but the referee's ruled he's knocked it on. I think he has. I think there is a knock on here. That was a screamer of a bomb from Pierce, and uh, that attack written all over it for his left edge men. And they got there, and they've turned it into a knock-on. I just want to see how they've done it. Has it been knocked on by the very reliable Nightingale into another player? I think so. Yes, and then rebounded back. Yeah. No, he's lost oh, it. he's lost it. Goal. Yeah. Yeah, he's lost hey, it. And to a man in an offside position, surely. Again. In Gasney. Mm. Just don't seem to worry about it. They play the knock-on and not where it finishes up. Dangerous set. It is a dangerous set. Dangerous set here. Most dangerous set in the game of a Dragons perspective. There's less than two minutes to go in the first half. The Roosters lead 8-6. It is absolutely teeming with rain here. As the ball goes back to the left, it goes to Pierce. He gets it away then to Anasta. Anasta got a pass away to Minicello. Minicello well read by the defence and has put down 10 metres out. He'll play the ball five in from touch. It comes from Leilua. Away it goes to Pierce. He plays the front man and that's uh, Nuasala. And Nuasala will get up and play about 10 metres out on the goalpost at the Dragons end of the field. Friends at dummy half. He decides to go back to the left. It goes away then. And the kick from kick ah. from Anasta will go all the way over the dead ball line. And play will restart with uh, the tap kick back at the 20 metre line. That's and from the time that left the boot. That's playing pretty and not putting your, putting your body on the line, not having a go. Uh, that, that was a poor play by a bloke that's experienced in Anasta. There wasn't enough play from Friend there. There was a midfield play the ball and it had to be played by Friend across the advantage line with runners coming on to him. They, they, they conceded an enormous amount of ground and then turned it into a weak option play at the end. And Nasta overweighted it. It was poor play, that. Safi brings the ball back for the Dragons. We've got less than a minute in the first half to go. The Roosters lead eight points to six and taking it up as Pryor. And Pryor's going to play it. About 25 metres out from his own goal line. Back towards the centre of the field. They'll go to the right. No, the Dragons, they go to the left. It comes to Hornby in a second-man play. Sees the ball finish up in the hands of Cooper. And Cooper trying to get on the outside of his man. Got it away to Morris. He had to have two juggles to catch it. And he's tackled about 12 metres his own side of halfway. Five in from touch. 20-odd seconds to go in this first half. Gee, they risk something there which you don't see too often the Dragons. They tried to put something on prior to half-time. As they're now, as, uh, <laughs> Cray brings it back. And the Roosters look at the touch touch to say, can we get a penalty out of this? Ball is fed to the right. Ball comes across now. A long ball finds Gaznia. Gaznia gets it away to Nightingale. Nightingale trying to get away. He got away from the first defender. He can't get away from the second. But he managed to get the pass back to Bo Scott on the last play. Scott runs at Rossville. He get a pass away. He does. It goes then to Young. The ball's loose on the ground. And it's picked up. And would you believe picked up by Cooper. And they'll go to the half-time sheds. With the scoreline reading, the Roosters 8, the Dragons 6. Mitch Orbison and Brayton Astor scoring the tries for the Roosters. The Dragons try was scored by Gaznia, and it was converted by Saud, who also missed a penalty goal. So Anasta gets the second half underway. The ball's going to bounce and bounce towards Saud, who gathers the ball up, and he uploads the ball to Pryor, and Pryor brings the ball back and runs into Conan Kennedy. He'll play the ball about 12 metres out from his own goal line. Eight points to six in favour of the Roosters. That's the half-time score as Sappy takes the ball back to his own 20. Almost in the centre of the park. He plays it to Fiend and Fiend gets it away to Cray. And Cray charges ahead. And he's tackled 15, his own side of halfway. Fiend from dummy half again. He gets a pass on to Young and Young shows it one way. He goes on his own. He's put down by Con, just short of the halfway line. Almost in the centre of the park as they send it away to Saud. And Saud will kick and he's kicking for a gap between the fullback and the winger. He's found it's a good kick because it goes all the way back to the... uh, in goal area and Leilua has to pick it up and run, run it back and he runs into Cooper and Nightingale there's another defender down there as well and he'll play the ball just uh, 10 out from his own goal line as they run the ball back themselves about 20 metres out from the goal post at their end of the field they're defending the southern end in the second half the Roosters as Perrett goes for a run out of dummy half he runs into Pryor there's another defender there as well
as well. He'll play the ball 25 out from his own goal line. Here goes Minicello from dummy half as he runs it back to within 11 of the halfway. He's put down by Young and, uh, and Bo Scott, just uh, short of the halfway. Out of dummy half, the ball is fed now to Pierce, and Pierce has a crack at a 40 20. It'll go away and away oh. downfield, and in the end, it's picked up by Morris. He got back to his own goal line. He runs over the 10, he's back to the 20, and then he's hit in a solid tackle. And he'll play it 20 out from his own goal line and 20 metres in from touch. Two, two good opening sets there, David. Uh, both good yardy sets. One, one, the opener from the Dragons, and a good kick by Soud, and a good return set from the Roosters, and a good long kick by Pierce. And uh, they, uh, the Dragons bring the ball back through Safi, who runs straight over the top, tries to run over the top of, the, of Pierce, who bounces back, but he got back to his feet. Craig Hamilton on the sideline. Well, the news out of the dressing rooms, Wayne Bennett, a very simple message for the Dragons as they shift it wide, and that was to get rid of the mistakes in their own half. That's all he said. He said the errors in our own 50 is what cruelled us in the first 40 minutes. He said tidy that up. He said and just continue to play a simple game down the middle of the field. That will do today to win this game. Now, from the Roosters' point of view, Brian Smith... He wants the passes shortened up from his side. He wants his side standing a bit deeper in attack. And he said to keep trying to punch holes through them, the Dragons in the middle of the ruck. Well, Lua picks it up after a kick downfield from Sowd. Went all the way to the, the uh, goal line before the left winger picked it up. He plays it to Perrett, and Perrett goes for a gallop across field. He runs into a couple of defenders, and he'll play it 25 out from his own goal line, make it 30, right in the centre of the park. It's eight points to six on a very cloudy, wet afternoon here in Sydney as Kennedy takes the ball ahead, and he'll play it nine short of halfway. We're watching a classic arm wrestle here to open the second half. A classic arm wrestle, almost as if they're, they're str struggling to get a, p a position for a field goal, only there'll be no field goals taken. But that's what's happening at the moment, and it's a matter of who breaks down first, who makes the first error. And a pass from Nuasala finds Con, who sends it back. Brilliantly half volleyed by Pierce, but he well, sent a pass away to Hollis, and it's forward. Well, yeah, right, well, well, thankfully, they've, they've picked that one up, because uh, as soon as Pierce threw that, I thought, that's forward. Well, it's another one where the player was standing in front of the man who threw the ball, Craig. It's, we had a great view of that. Well, I thought the one before it might have, yeah, might well, have been a bit dusty. But look uh, at that. I tell you, just, <laughs> just, a, uh, just a quick <laughs> comment on two things that did happen in the first half. In the tunnel at halftime, there was a lot of talk, A, about the Dragons being allowed a try after Morris was clearly out. That was a talking point. And there was a lot of people who thought that the Roosters should, should have been denied their try as well because it should have been uh, ruled a lost ball, the, the, the Anasta try, when BJ... Well, Lalua lost the ball. That should have been not awarded as well. What about the try, the aerial view of the try in the corner by uh, Lalua? Uh, it wasn't discussed at the break. Yeah, well, obviously, Bill says that, that Sow had played at that ball and that had a big bearing on Lalua losing the ball. That's and, what I reckon. And, and the discussion was that Sow did not play at the ball. Well, and well, I reckon he good. did. OK. I reckon he used his knees to play at the ball. Not knee the player, but he, he... He stuck him under the ball to stop it being scored, which is playing at the ball. He's got the ball at the moment, comes to pry. But he made a movement, Warren, with his knee in yeah, the direction of the ball and knocked it out of his hands, Yep, in my opinion. 25 metres out, the Dragons go on the attack, and here goes Fien. He throws a dummy, throws another dummy, offloads to Hornby. Away it goes into Boyd, and Boyd decides to go on his own. He can't get away from Kenny Dow, who puts him down on a good tackle. 15 metres out, five in from touch over on that left side of the field. It comes to Cooper, away to Hornby. Hornby sends it back to Young, and Young decides to go straight down the centre, and he's tackled about eight metres out on the goal line. Last play coming up for the Dragons. Fien has it. Fien puts a little grubber kick in. It's loose in the in goal area, and they have to hurry back, and it's Carney who gets there knock it over the dead ball line and play will restart with a line drop out. Now, now we'll see if the Dragons can get the errors out of their game. They're going to get the ball back from under the post. We'll just see what this next set of six brings. Yeah, good opening by them on the back of the forward pass by Pierce. They've, they've taken the, the upper hand in this wrestle, so they've, uh, they've managed to grab territorial... Uh... Gee, they were lucky there, the Roosters. That ball came off friend's leg. Uh, I think Carney was in a great position to stop it originally, Warren. Yeah. But then when it deflected off... They looked wrong-footed and, and stationary, didn't they? It didn't look like anyone was going to get there to uh, defend that uh, that ball in goal. It could have been there for the taking. Here's Safi bringing the ball back with the Dragons. And he plays the ball to Fien, and on it goes to Young. And Young goes straight and hard, and he's tackled 20 metres out. He gets up and plays the ball, and here comes Fien out of dummy half. He runs one way, runs the other. He sends it away to Hornby. On it goes then to Boyd. Boyd gets it away. Here comes Nightingale. He's in! Nightingale scores a wonderful try and puts the Dragons back in front. Well, that's a great try. When you think about the conditions, it's a slippery field. It's not great for expansive footy, and that was beautifully worked, Warren. Yeah, the, the, the Roosters don't get as many guys to the edge of the field 
to stuff out pr problems as the Dragons do. And uh, they weren't able to get the numbers there. Then Nightingale jumps back off the right foot. When they've gone to the right edge, we'll see it. They're struggling for numbers here. Number three, Lynette's hanging off. And um, Lelua's coming to Mark well, they, Yeah, they broke ranks. Lelua, Lelua went up ahead of the ball there and they, that thinned them out terribly. It was a very good play from Darius Boyd, a selective pass in the end, that last pass to Nightingale. He could, uh, under the weight of pressure, in a split second, passed the ball to the centre, to Cooper. Yeah, I, I think, think but he held on to it yeah, and realised that exactly that Lelua, Lelua had broken ranks and, and Nightingale needed to get it. Yeah, well, that's what happened. Uh, Lalua thinned his own defence line out by advancing ahead of it. And, uh, that's what ball players do. They re they're waiting for the error to be made and committed by defence. That's what they're looking at when they hold onto the ball. They hold up the pass. Here's Soward. And he got what he was looking for there, uh, Darius Boyd. On the western touchline, 21 metres out. Can he make it 12 points to eight? Difficult conversion. Wide out. There's the kick, off the boot, it looks fantastic because it is. The Dragons are in front 12-8, 33 minutes to go in the grand final. Well, the drop put on the bad pass by Pierce. they went left to right, they, they chanced their arm, which is their want, um, the Roosters, and uh, what could have been a good right edge attack for them turned into an error, and the, the St George side have come down and made them pay for it. I think I'll still have a bit of work to do too, Warren. He had to stop Linnett in his tracks and come back on the inside. Jump back inside. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose it's easy to do when you've got momentum, but he still had to do it, didn't Well, he? it helps on a wet furl too. The guy tried to make up ground sideways, and the other guy that jumped back inside you, he's far more composed on his feet than the guy under full sail. The Dragons bring the ball out of their own end as here comes the man who had a bit to do with that try, Fiend, to do it. Out of dummy half, he starts to make him think a bit, doesn't he, Warren? That's well, they lost control of the polar ball speed then in that last set, and they're losing it again in this set. And again, it's Hornby who charges up to the halfway line. He'll play the ball 15 in from touch. He plays the ball to Fiend. On it comes to Young. In turn, it goes to Saud, and Saud's going to kick. And again, I reckon that's early in the tackle count. I still reckon there's one tackle left on there, Rich. Uh, here it uh, goes down the throat of Minicello and he's tackled 25 metres out from his goal line on this western scrum line. From dummy half goes Perrot and Perrot takes the ball on a good run. Typical Perrot run out of dummy half. Pinches an easy 10 metres, gets back to the 40 metre line, his own side of halfway. Now Leilua goes from dummy half. He's taken by Young and then Bo Scott. He's finished off just inside his own half on the western scrum line. Minicello goes from dummy half. He's going to be tackled. So we've seen both wingers and the fullback. It's been a back set totally here from the Roosters as they take the ball to the 40 metre line inside the opposition half as Nua Sila takes the ball downfield. He gets it back to Friend. Away it goes through the hands to Linnett. Linnett goes at Sowen and Sowen's got him. Can't put him into touch. He tried to. Last tackle coming up for the Roosters. 25 out on the goal line. It's fed from Anasta to Pierce and Pierce puts the ball up high in the air. It's coming down near the Dragons goal line and going high and taking it brilliantly as Boyd. And a bit of a question mark whether Boyd was tackled before he hit the ground, I must admit. Uh, no, I think he was blowing up and, and making that very point, David. That was a fearless diffusing of the bomb, that. There was collision <laughs> written all over that when that bomb went up. There were eastern suburbs blokes flying at the ball there, and Boyd just ignored them and went up and caught it beautifully. I reckon he was tackled before he hit the ground, too. Here's Morris making some ground, and Cooper out of dummy half. He goes for a gallop. He'll play the ball out towards his own 20. This is where the Dragons are a great side and have proved all year. They can fight out a close win if, if it has to be fought out on very skinny margins. They're very good at it. And they've got their noses in front now. There's the kick down field from Saud. That familiar kick down field and back their defence style of football, knowing they're in front. Here's Leilua bringing the ball back and he'll play it 12 his own side of halfway. Haven't seen a replay of that bomb yet. Here comes the ball across towards Minicello. He tries to burst through and he's tackled. About five his own side of halfway. 20 in from touch, ball played to friend. On it goes to Con, who slips over in the greasy centre of the Olympic Stadium. He'll play the ball just inside St George Illawarra's half. The ball comes now to friend as the champ. Those who remember 79 start cheering. A lot of them in this crowd weren't even born, of course, when the Dragons, the Saints last They used the to rattle the, rattle the floor of the Sheridan stand, the Saints fans. It's a bit hard to do that now. Here comes the Carney, <laughs> who almost goes through. And he's tackled 28 metres out on the goal line. Last play coming up. Hurriedly getting into dummy half is friend. It, the ball goes 
goes across into Pierce. Up goes the bomb, and it's knocked down, knocked on by uh, the Roosters. Who's going high for the ball was Nightingale. Coming through was Linnett. He knocks it dead over the dead ball line. The referee will put a scrum down, and they put the scrum down with the Dragons to feed it 10 out from their own line. It'll be a handover, won't it? Yeah, it was a useful bomb, and there was an arm on it by Linnett, but the arm was meant to tap it back, not forward, and uh, it'll be a Dragon ball on the basis of knock on by Linnett. But uh, it's a good, it's good stuff. But the Dragons, when they, when they know they're in front, that's when they mentally they click in for the, for the, for the struggle, the, the grim battle, and they know how to do it. 28 minutes to go in the grand final. The Dragons lead 12 points to eight. As the ball is fed into the centre of the field, I tell you what, Hornby almost got away. Miles, a great tackle, and there was another defender in there as well. As they go down the centre of the park through Cray, who looked as if he was hit uh, around the scone. There were a suggestion of a high shot. Uh, Jake Friends hit him between the ears. Look at this advantage line drive from the dummy half. They, they do. They just plough up the middle, take no risk. They're in front. And Young takes the ball ahead exactly the same manner. Warren works it up to the halfway line. Last play. Oh! oh knocked on it, dummy half. An unrehearsed play there. Fiend not thinking. He was going to go to the left for some reason. He was going to go left and pass right there. It was going to be a little trick play, I think. He was going to jump to the left, pass to the right. And in thinking about what he was doing, he forgot to pick the ball up. So the Roosters get some uh, field position on the back of the Fiend mistake, and they've got it 38 metres out from the Dragons line. 27 and a half to go in the game. The Dragons lead 12 points to 8, and taking it up as Kennedy, and Kennedy one waltzes across field, and he's put down 30 metres out from the goal line. He'll play the ball in the centre of the park, and uh, he plays the ball, oh, it's a pass that just found Carney in the right spot. He, in turn, got it on to Linnett, and Linnett's tackled, 20 metres out from the Dragons line. 15 in from touch, as friends at dummy half, he fires a pass at Carney. He has a crack on his own. He's put down 12 metres out from the goal line on the western scrum line they'll go to the right again it's fed across then to pierce he got an inside ball that went to minicello minicello loses the ball forward and the dragons will get a scrum feed 10 out from the goal line right underneath their goal post at the northern end of the field well there's that error of pierce and minicello together pierce can be guilty of he's got all the plays he can be guilty though not executing the right one at the right time and Minnie's hands aren't the best in the business now i'd suggest there that nothing Might wrong with the pass. I, I just think Minnie's been, well, he's been hit ball and all. Was I don't he know hit before he got the ball? I don't know about that. I don't know whether he was or not. They're not going to rule it anyway. Well, they can't, Warren. They can't no. rule on that when they can't rule on the stripping rule. <laughs> no. <laughs> Although you wouldn't, <laughs> you wouldn't put it past Bill to rule on anything. No. <laughs> he's been known to make up rules in the grand final before today. And. Uh, Come on, there. Yeah, well, you keep your feet back and let the ball in first. <laughs> no, that's grand final, now we're going to get a scrum lesson. Not the, not the dreaded feet across, Craig. Oh, surely not, Warren. Nate, put your head down. Right, in there. Head down, feet across. That'll bring the feet fans back. back. Yeah. Anyway, the Dragons have got the ball after they've won the scrum and soaked a good minute of time up to them by that. Uh, they won't mind if the referee does that for another 20 scrums in their second half because that'll be game over. It won't happen, of course, as Cooper takes the ball back of his own 20 metre line. They'll take a dim view of what they've done, though, if the other mob take the lead close to full time. Yeah. They'll say, well, we soaked all the game time out. Here now comes, we're behind. Safi takes the ball back to the 30 metre line as they go from dummy half, and here comes Cray. And Cray, with a good driving run, takes the ball back to the 40 metre line, his own side of the halfway. They're on the scrum line, eastern side of the field. Still, a lot of those roosters were offside then and the referee called them out of it as Sauer brings the ball back and he's tackled nine short of the halfway line. Benny Cray's gone. Oh, ball Lippie. comes across to Hornby because Sauer had to play the ball Hornby has to put the kick in and it's gone straight down the throat of Perrett and Perrett gathers it up and he runs it back and he's hammered in a good tackle. He'll play the ball about 12 his own side of halfway. Hmm, the Roosters have the ball, and out of dummy half goes uh, Minicello, and he's going to be playing it just inside his own half. Is that the rain teaming down again, Craig? Yeah, it certainly is. It's coming in pretty heavily now. And now it's uh, Kenny Dow who's going to play the ball, 41 metres out from his own goal line. They send it across to the left to and Riles, and Riles is put down. 32 metres out now from the goal line at the Dragons end of the field. 24 and a half to go in the grand final. Miles has the ball. He got a pass away to Carney. The ball's gone loose, picked up by Linnett, and Linnett's going to be put down. And the referee said it went back. Probably right. Not quite sure how that ball finished up firing, uh, coming along the ground. Did he try, try a flick pass? A bit like Benji. Up goes a high bomb on the last. Getting underneath it, Morris takes it well and then he loses well, the surely ball he's him. been hit and i reckon he was hitting the air and it is it's a yeah, penalty he's against, been hit 
in the air, and that's fair enough. Perrick had, saying no. Well, he, had his legs, so. he had his legs cut from under him there. That wasn't a challenge for the ball. If, no. if there had been a challenge for the ball, that would have been OK. But if you have a look at that one again, he has his legs cut from under him. Have a look at this. Which is the a bomb. penalty it's and a great, right, rightly awarded. It's a great bomb. But there's a block on there. Oh, and he just cuts his legs from under him. You I don't know do what it. Perrett's complaining about. That's that's as clear cut well, he was blocked. as possible. Oh, his path was blocked um, momentarily. I think Soward might have got in his road. Uh, well, it couldn't have been Soward. Wrong side of the field, surely. Although Soward's just coming back from over that side. Maybe Just a report there. on Mick Wayman too. He seems to be OK. He's warming up on the sideline here, uh, of course, after leaving the field with concussion in the first half. Dragons have got the ball over on that left side as Hornby goes straight through. He's over the halfway. Great tackle from Minicello. He's got the ball back to Costigan. And Costigan will play the ball 39 metres out. Sooner or later, Hornby was going to make a break. He'd been threatening to do it all day. It comes to Soud. Away it goes to Boyd. Boyd throws a dummy. Goes on his own. Taken in a good tackle. Carney was right there. Carney's tracked Boyd nearly all day. Ball's played. And from dummy half, it goes to Nightingale. He sends it back to Soud. Soud throws a dummy. He gets it away to Bo Scott. Oh, and Bo Scott said thanks very much oh, for thanks, that. Thanks a million. Yeah. Max well, a Bo million. Scott does magnificently well to pinch at least five or six metres as he plays the ball. They go back to the centre of the park. Jeremy Smith decides to tuck it under the right wing. He goes down the centre of the park. He's tackled 15 metres out. Last play coming up here for the Dragons. Fiends in at dummy half. They'll go to the left. The ball is fired now to Hornby. Hornby puts up the bomb and coming through is Morris and then it's knocked over the dead should ball line. A... Knocked over the dead ball line by Perrett. I reckon it should have been a penalty. Should have been a penalty to, to the Roosters, to the Roosters against, you're right. against Morris for pushing Perrett out of the road. Spot I'm on. Here, and I think he's going to get it. Surely, if we can see that from here, a bloke's pushed out of the road. Surely. It's, it, we're now in driving rain, visibility poor, and the three of us have seen the, the push in the back. And no, well, look, he's, you can't. Well, you can't do that. And they've got away with it. Well, this is the heaviest rain we've had all day. I'm it's absolutely this. teeming down. I reckon I, I reckon I know what he's got. To, why he's got away with it, Warren? Because his eyes are on the ball. And I know what you're saying, but I reckon that's what the the Webbers made the interpretation. I'm not sure whether it's Archer or Hayne, but you heard Hayne say, "Well, you know, he was." I think he's saying basically, "Well, what's he meant to do? Stop." I see now what he means. But I thought it was a clear push. But I can understand why the referee. Well, what the referees in terms You're very forgiving of St George. No, I'm not, it's not that one. Indus- yes, you are. Well, I'm just forgiving because I can understand. You can't push anyone in the back with that, that's not in possession of the ball. Ball's going to be played 15 metres out. You can hardly see the other side of the field. Ball well, we, comes to Hornby. The refs aren't over the other side of the field. They're right there. Oh, I know. I wasn't saying... Ball's going to be played by the Dragons. Underneath the goalposts, here's Jeremy Smith and one of those bulldozing runs of his. And he's tackled about five metres out in the goal line. Last play coming up for the Dragons. They lead by 12 points to eight. The ball's played to Fiend. He gets the ball away. It goes to Hornby. Hornby throws a long cutout ball. It goes to Nightingale. And Nightingale will score. And they won't rule on a forward. I don't think it was forward. Nightingale... He's going, not... up, he's going upstairs to check on something, but this is the pass that has bowled everyone out along the ground. And I just think Nightingale's picked it up and raced it and scored. Well, what a great hands. Nightingale and every right to knock that on. It's bowled across towards his wing along the ground you know, on a very wet day. There's the try. And just have a look. Has Minicello come in with the knees there? Oh, I, think, I don't think you'll get any problem out of that one. Um... He's arrived half an hour late. But as as often happens, yeah, I don't think really he's going to get look, look for anything there. His news just hits the news of uh, Nightingale. But as often happens, the pass thrown out along the ground produces great results for the tide on attack. Here comes the answer. 82,000 Dragon supporters agree with Bill Harrigan. It's a try. The Dragons are in front, 16-8. And Soud has a kick, a goal to come from right on the Western touchline again. Well, as we know, they don't mind throwing the ball around at the money end, and they were well positioned there. And uh, that was a pass that had touch written all over it. A message that was heading, heading to touch, but Nightingale beautifully uh, onto it and in, in the corner.
20 minutes to go in the grand final. It's a long time, but this rain suggests it's going to make it. You know, points are at an absolute premium. Oh, they've got the winning lead now, and they've got the winning game, and they've got the winning mentality. That, that's the kind of side they are. When they're in front in a game like this, they'll take a pair of it. They're only ever vulnerable when, they, when they're when they behind. Here's the kick from Soward. It looks good. It looks good. It's magnificent. Straight over the black dot. The Dragons lead by 10. 18 points to 8. 19 and a half to go in the grand final. It's got to be 19-12 uh, to replicate the score. They need a full goal and the other mob needed another unconverted try. Haven't they come out in the second half here and dominated the Dragons? This, I, I've got to be honest, I didn't see this coming. Well, you Bas said Based on the evidence of the first half, they certainly tidied up their mistakes and that's what Wayne Bennett wanted. Well, they've made one mistake so in, the, in their own half, I think, in the second half, haven't they, Warren? The yeah, Feen, knock, on by Feen. knock on by Feen at dummy half. They've had a penalty, they've had two line drop kicks, they've had all the ball. Ball goes to the left and here goes Ben Cray charging downfield and he's tackled. 31-32 out from his own line. They'll play the ball in the centre of the park and they charge down the centre again to the Dragons. Back yep. to within nine of the halfway. Yeah, you'll see some frayed edges from the Roosters from here on, I reckon. This mob will unravel them. And a kick from Fien out of dummy half that I reckon was taken early. Trying to play it with the boot as Minicello. He kicks it away from himself, which gives the Dragons a bit more time to get down and put pressure on. And they'll play at the Roosters, 25 out in their own goal line. 10 in from touch. The ball goes across towards Linnett, and Linnett is hammered 30 metres out from his own goal line. 18 and a half to go in the grand final. The Dragons lead 18-8. The ball is fed to Carney. On it goes to Pierce. He holds it up out wide. The ball's been knocked on. Picked up by Cooper. Cooper racing away. If he'd given it to Morris, surely Morris scores. Maybe she saw something that we, could, we could, couldn't see up here. The Dragons are on the attack here. If they score here, surely that'll be the grand final. As Costigan is going to take the ball to within eight metres of the goal line. They're going to play the ball. No, Fiend goes away out of dummy half. He got a pass away. A charging onto the ball. It's the birthday boy. There he yes. is. He's in. Dean Young scores Young. next to the left uprights. Like he did at the cricket ground in round 22. The Dragons lead 22-8. Shortly, it'll be 24-8. What a great game he's had. Now, he has tackled everything that has moved today, Dean Young, and he's on the end of a pass close at the try line, Warren, to crash over for a try. That's a replica of the Jeremy Smith try against the Tigers. Nathan Feen out of dummy half to his left. Jeremy Smith crashed over a try. This time was Dean Young beautifully into a gap and putting pressure, unbelievable pressure, on the defence line because he hits the gap beautifully. And Nathan Feen, he just plays that play at magnificently to the he plays it to the centimeter perfectly have a look at this now what they're looking it comes at out here, here. they're it wondering out. whether dean young's knocked this on but watch him pull the b defender under he just worries the number 12 he comes out probably he was the a defender but he's the, he's the first defender off the off the two markers and he just plays under them and bothers them and uh, the runner hits the next hole it's just beautiful stuff and the next fella out can't come outside in strongly enough that's Pierce in this case. Well, it had to be a left shoulder tackle in the ribs. That'd be a big hit to stop that one. What are they looking they're at? They're looking at a possible knock on by Young when he first gets the ball. Does he knock it forward into into Orbison? Um, look, I say no. He does juggle the ball, but I think to pull that one back, that'd be a terribly harsh call from the video ref. Yeah, it would be. The try looks a formality. Oh, it's a great piece of football from the two of them. That's a lovely little play. That's no fluke. That's well, that you're looking at, as I say, as a replica. Do you remember the Jeremy Smith try after Nathan Feen against the Tigers dived? We're looking here. Is this where we're looking? Well, he catches the ball. Does he spill it forward, or is that we've seen it? He's still well, having, he, another look. having another look. It's that first juggle. Does he juggle it into Orbison? Oh yes. But does he? That's the thing. Does he juggle it into Orbison? Does Orbison touch it? I think that's what he's looking for. Wow. This Warren, he's watched it that many times. It's got to no, be. I think he's got a benefit of the doubt. I'd say he's well, benefit of the doubt. Well, surely benefit of the doubt try. Yes, it is. And David, just the stats for Dean Young so far in the game: 27 tackles, and that's his 11th hit up. A whale of a game, and his first try. He's having a mighty game, Richard. He's having a, a whale of a game. Who's the bloke to tip him to get the Clive Churchill medal?
Craig Hamilton. And the guy that reminded me it's his birthday today. It's a long way still to go. Well, he's the best in the business, South Boy down there. He's the sideline eye of the century. Thank you, Warren. He 17 knows. minutes to go in the game. He knows his onions. <laughs> Soured to make it 24 8. Doesn't know much about football, boy. He knows his onions. You taught me everything no, I know, Warren. No but you haven't taught me everything you know. <laughs> no, Here's Soured. Easiest well kick of the second half. Beasts have had four completions. I'll tell you how many the Saints have had in a sec. Here comes Soured. There it is. He converts the Dean Young try. The Dragons lead by 24 points to eight. 16 and a half to go in the grand final. 16 points the difference. 11 to 4, their, their completion. So it's all uh, it's all the Dragons, and this will be their 12th possession, 13th actually, because Feen had a had a knock on. 82,334. The crowd. I wonder how many they've got if they'd still left uh, the end stands in 110 potentially. They're trying a short kick off here. And getting underneath it is Hornby, who takes it superbly and almost got knocked over while he was in the air. But the Dragons have got it 12 their own side. I should say 22 their own side of halfway. The kick-up was just a bit too deep in the end, wasn't it? He, no one could really put pressure on Hornby. As I say, you'll see the you'll see the frayed edges unravel here. That no one can unravel them like the, the side like St George when they get their, get themselves in front. They'll be that confident now. They'll, they'll be doing things you've never seen. Well, they've got the ball too, Warren. The yeah. other, mother, yeah. That helps. The other mob can't score without the ball. Oh, yeah. As you know, ball goes to the left, and here's another kick. They're driving the ball down the left side of the field. There's nobody at home. It'll go into touch. But uh, Minicello was the only one coming across, and there were a heap of dragons coming down that left side. The play's good, but for two reasons. One, if the ball had stayed in the field of play, Minicello would have had to race across and do something, either kick it dead, and it would have eluded him. The Dragons were coming in numbers to score another try. 15 and a half to go in the game. It's 24-8 in favour of the Dragons. Scrum feet to the Roosters coming up. 10 out from their goal line. 20 in from the Eastern touch line. Because the Roosters all packed in the scrum to take time off the clock. The Dragons took their time to get to the scrum for the obvious reason. Suck in a couple of big ones. They've got to defend here. Now the ball comes to Riles. And Riles has taken in a solid tackle and put down 20 out from his own goal line. 10 in from touch. It's played to Anasta. Anasta goes for a run out of dummy half. And he's hit in a solid tackle and loses the ball. The Dragons have come up with it again as they race across field through Gaznia. And he's tackled 22 metres out from his own goal line. Was there a strip on Anasta? That'll be something worth looking at. I don't know how it came out, the way it came out. Bo Scott has the ball. And he trips over about 11 metres out. The Dragons on the attack again as the ball's going to be played here to Cooper. And Cooper sends the ball away to Dean Young. And Young decides to have a crack on his own. And he's put down five metres out on the goal line and this will be a penalty right in front straight in, and they'll mate. make it 18-0 here I've got no doubt Sal will have the shot at goal to make it 18 the yeah. difference I mean it would be slightly demented if he didn't it's right under the post Jeremy, Jeremy I've already dealt with it <laughs> Dean Young's in some trouble he's been injured here flat on his back yeah someone came I think it was Hargreaves, Hargreaves. came flop, flying in with a flop I think it's a flop isn't it or a prowler. Oh, a prowler. He's hitting. He's either hitting with a shoulder or a headbutt. But he certainly made contact with the head. Oh, gee, that's not. That's not unlike the famous Rich, Richard Villasanti on, on Brad on. Fittler in 2002. And what did that do to the Roosters? Fired them <laughs> up so much they made the Warriors look ordinary for the rest of the game. Yeah, Maria Hargraves. But. Uh, yeah, that'll be put in the memory bank by a few I, people. I had him down as the one with the most potential to be sent off since um, the last guy in the grand final at Hargrove's death. Doesn't quite know how to control the aggression that he's got in him. Who was he's the last one sent off in a grand final? What? Sigsworth was the last well, one in 86, I think. <laughs> and Billy Wilson before him a long time earlier from St George. But, um, yeah. Oh, what's the package that got sent off? He's a very, very robust player, is Hargrove's. So sound from underneath the goalpost to make it 26 points to eight. 14 minutes left on the clock. Jason, Jason. Jason Riles walking around the river. He says, stop that. Otherwise, I'll give him another penalty. Here's Soward moving in. There's the kick. It's 26 to eight. He has kicked well today. No doubt about it. Well, he's kicked the ones from the sideline, Warren. 
Yeah, I, but, well, I'm bearing that in mind yeah. when I made the comment, actually. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not saying it because he kicked that one from in front, if you know what I mean. Well, and it's a bit of an irony, Warren, because... It's puni this is the punishing part for the Roosters. They've got 13 minutes to travel. They know they're booting. They can't win this game. That's oh. offside. That went forward. Oh, linesman. Dear, oh, dear. Surely. Now, they tried a, tried a grubber kick there, kicking off to Anasta. It was trapped with the boot by Hornby. It looked like Nightingale was in front of Hornby. He dashed up. He hurled it back infield. I'd love to have a look at it all again. And the Dragons have got the ball 12 their own side of halfway through Gasny. Uh, Argrees will want to watch himself. He, he's, he is flying very, very close to the wind at the moment. So I say, he's the man most likely. <laughs> here, comes, here comes Costigan. And he'll play the ball eight metres his own side of halfway. Fien gets it away to Hornby. Hornby on to Nightingale. And Nightingale will play it about a metre his own side of halfway. Twelve and a half to go in the grand final. The Dragons lead by 18. It comes to Saud. He'll drive it deep. He kicks it away from Minicello. But he gets on his bike, there's Mini. And he gathers the ball in. He looks up. And he's going to be tackled. About 15 metres out from his own goal line. And 15 in from touch over on that eastern side of the field. Twelve minutes to go in the grand final. The Dragons lead 26 points to eight. The Roosters have the ball. 15 out from their own goal post. They've got to go the length of the field to even score a try at the moment. They're going to play at 20 metres out. They're running out of tackles as Minicello runs away from dummy half. He looked for support. There was none there. And Bo Scott flings him into the ground. 25 out from the Roosters line. On the Western scrum line, Friend fires a pass at Riles. And Riles is going to be put down. 12 short of the halfway line. Last tackle against the Roosters. Friend at dummy half. A bad pass. Well picked up by Carney. He throws a long ball out wide. It'll go into touch, I think you'll find. It does. It went past the ball, across the touchline. The Dragons will get a handover. 30 out on the Roosters' goal line. Uh, they're chasing the game, and, you know, he's gone wide, kept the ball in hand, wet day, long way behind, and didn't quite get it right. You right, Kenny? 11 and a half to go in the game. The Dragons, through Cray, take it ahead. And he's going to play the ball, 25 out from his own goal line. Cross for not great tackle, Carney. I said to you earlier, I reckon every time Boyd's been hit today, Carney's been involved in the tackle. It's almost as if, he's, if he was his man. They come back to the centre of the park and out of dummy half. Here comes Nightingale. It's Nightingale's on. gone. Oh, he's almost there for his It's third. on. It's on. Here comes Soward here, here looking for the field goal. The ball goes. No, they don't. They play the front man, Jeremy Smith. And Jeremy Smith charges at the line. Can he get the ball down? He's in the in goal area. He's been walked back into the field of play. Five, last one. Last play. Where's Saud? He's still in the great position to have yeah, the field goal. He is. He's in a prime position. Foon's seen him. Nathan Foon's seen him. And they go from dummy half and score. Oh, clever. Nathan Foon. <laughs> he let him think. He let him wait. Thinking that the field goal was in. He threw the dummy and said, Chewy on your boots. It's 30 to 8. It's a massacre. The Dragons. With 10 minutes on the clock, aren't done with yet. Oh, that was a good play. Oh, that was a good play. Had some arrogance about it, didn't it? They'd set up for the field goal. So he he's up there. Everyone's looking. And over goes Foon, sneaks a little dummy and over he crosses. Yeah, he was selling it. He had his right arm in the air. You know, here I am, back here to me, back here. And Foon, well, Foon goes left and in for a very, very good try. Sowd's got his right arm in the air or was calling, calling. Let's have a look, does he... No, he doesn't even dummy to throw it back. He just goes out of dummy half from close range and scores. Just too quick for him. I just think Warry said, I've got them all conned into thinking what's on, so I'll go myself. And they're tight. And Hargraves comes in with an elbow again. He's hit him with a forearm after he scored. Well, I bet Fiend is feeling no pain from that. No. 30 points to eight. This is comprehensive. In the conditions, this is a thrashing. Be nice to get the 46. It's a second Here half comes Soward. Moves in. Converts the try. It's 32 to 8. It just emphasises what confidence does to a team. They weren't confident in the first half. But, uh, boy, oh, boy, when they, get, when they get comfortable and confident, they can play a whole lot better. And they've just shown that. They had to take the lead before they bunged this on, and it rattled the, the Roosters once the Roosters got behind. They were the ones that were shaken up, and 
the Dragons have certainly found the frayed edges. Now Anasta doesn't try the short kickoff either in the air or along the ground. It's the conventional kickoff and you know, the conventional return by a prop in the form of Costigan. The Roosters have only completed four. Haven't had the ball, Warren, have they? Uh, but I can't remember the last time I saw the Roosters in front of us with the ball, and we're, the we're dragon, on the 40 well, metre line inside the Dragons' territory. They've Trent made five, Merrin coming on. They've made five errors. The, the, the Saints have completed 15 to four of the Roosters, but the Roosters have made five errors, and the Saints have only made one. He hasn't had to bring Wayman back on. Trent Merrin's come on for his first stint in the game with eight minutes left on the clock. Fiends off, Merrin on. And I'll be very surprised, Craig, if your man doesn't get the Tri Churchill medal. I'd love to see who else they're going to give it to. Yeah, I think he's... He, he's Dean got, Young, he's... Uh, no, he's, he's had a big game, game, too. When they needed... Oh, there's a lovely ball from that. It was the Smith who was going through the line. Oh, he got a ball away, but Cooper couldn't handle it. She had looked as if there was another try coming up. Didn't happen. It's 32 to 8. Seven and a half left on the clock. The Dragons know they've won the Premiership. As Matt Fryer and Nathan Fiend come together on the sideline... Probably the happiest man on the sideline who's not playing, standing there under the rain. Luke Big Prittis. cap on. What about Luke yeah, Prittis? Yeah, he's got Let's a feel for Luke Prittis. Let's have a thought for him. Yeah. His contribution this year has been monumental. Played so many games for them to get Nathan Feen back from the injured list and allow him to finish the season off. And the man I was referring to, Warren, on a great point you made, was none other than Dad, Craig Young. Last time the Dragons won the Premiership, Craig Young was the captain. His son might get the Clive Churchill medal today as the Kennedy takes it ahead now for the Roosters. And they'll play the ball. 29 out from the Dragons line. The crowd are singing. They're in fine voice. The rain is pouring. The Dragons have six and a half minutes to go before they claim the premiership. The ball comes to the left. Here comes Carney. A little grubber kick into the in-goal area and willing it to go over the dead ball line was Nightingale. And then when he realised it wasn't going to, he just put his hand on the ball and said, that'll do. We don't mind conceding a line drop out here because at the moment, the margin is 24 points. And David, for long sight, Suffering St George Illawarra fans or St George fans before the, the merged uh, uh, the merged identity. This is, I suppose, a, a little bit of payback for 1975 and the 38 nil. There's still some deep cuts from that. You didn't hear what I said a moment ago. I said I, 46 would be hand. I see. Right. Okay. I'm with you. <laughs> 46 minus eight equals what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm with you. <laughs> oh dear, that was a long day standing underneath the Bradman stand with my best mate, who happens to be a Rooster supporter. They were uh, brilliant that day. Punishing. Well, but that, that was a great side, though, the Roosters side. What a great side to watch. Here come the Roosters on the back of the line dropout. Perrett goes from dummy half. He runs across field. He gets out of Mirren's tackle. He can't get away from Bo Scott, and Mirren comes again with the help of Bo Scott, and they put him down 15 metres out. There's five and a half to go in the grand final. The Dragons lead 32 to 8 as the ball comes from Pierce to Carney. The first time I think the two of them have been able to put the by play on in the second half. It finished up in Nuasala's hands, and he's tackled 10 metres out. They're playing the ball on the attack for one of the very few times, if not the only time in the second half. A good ball goes to Mole. Back it goes to Carney on a wraparound, and he's taken in a great tackle a metre out from the goal line and he's hurt I think Carney that was a try save and tackle and it was Darius Boyd I think Carney's hurt here two of them hit Carney on the run around it was a great play actually Carney played Miles as a front man then doubled quickly around him Miles got the arms free on fed it to Carney and Carney's been sandwiched oh I just wonder if it's a leg injury the way they're holding him, he, he seems to be clutching at a right well, knee. It was the way they're that calling the, for the stretcher here. This could be a serious injury for, for Carney. The Dragons knew straight away there was a problem. Darius Boyd, I think, looked straight up for the referee. I think Gaz was in there too. Yeah. He's in a lot of pain, Todd Carney. He's buckled over in the tackle. Two-man Dragons tackle, as you say, Warren. Try saver. Boyd, Darius Boyd and, and Gaznia. And he's he's injured. Calling for the stretcher for Todd Carney. That's it. He's been the story of the year. Fantastic comeback to NRL. Is he going to get on that Medicap? Medicap's out there. Have they called for it? They have called for it, but will he get on it? No, he's limping badly. I don't think he's got anything left. No point in staying on if he's badly hurt anyway. There's no comeback. That's a big win. 32 8. 
Dr. They've, Dr. they've Dr. really Williams opened it up. It. They've opened up in the second half, no doubt about it. The Dragons have really put it on. Well, as you said, Warren, at half time, one team wanted to get into the sheds and one didn't. And uh, the team that <laughs> needed to get into the sheds went in and have come out a different Yeah, they side. haven't played according to what Craig Tullis at half time they were going to do. They were just going to limit their errors, etc., etc., and they'd get there. But they've more than just gone out there and limited their errors. They've only made two errors in the second half. They've really played some football. Had all the ball, but the Roosters have made five errors. And uh, only completed five and five turned over. So they've only had ten possessions to about 18 of the, uh, the Saints. Carney to play the ball. He's OK. Well, whether he's OK or not, that's uh, questionable. But he's showing some guts up there. He said, no, I'll, I'll stay out here. I'll face the music with the rest of the team. It sent the Medicab off on a, another journey. Last play, ball goes to Pierce. It comes out wide to Anasta. Anasta keeps it alive. In fact, it's intercepted here by Sound. Sound loses the ball. It should be 6 to go for the Roosters. It is. As Linnett fell on it, then the referee said, no, there was a knock on both ways. Well, I thought Gazny was offside then. I thought that defence, that right edge defence, went half an hour before the ball was played. Look at Gazny. Yeah, he's offside. He's offside. He's jumped offside by a long way there. But they sort of play on and look for the advantage there. That was well, it was worth a penalty, but it, it, they sort of it makes the game stop start when you do that, particularly when the side's on, on the attack at the try line. Give it at the end of the set. And now Minicello gets the ball away to Nuasala, who goes racing onto the ball and basically typifies the Roosters second half because he loses it. And the Dragons are going to come up with a scrum feed 10 metres out in their own goal line. Well, the mistakes have outweighed their completions now. Six errors, five completions of Roosters. Well, so it's been a, a, a strip in that too, Warren. Pretty sad second half for them, for their point of view. Best side all year's won the comp, though. I, I can't, you know, fault what's happened here. I, I tipped them to win. I didn't think they'd win by as many because I thought the Roosters would have been a lot better defensively all through the 80 minutes. But uh, you know, it's funny how things come come out that's happened all year the Roosters have been good for 40 minutes in a lot of games and had pretty ordinary halves in the, in, in the other part of the game they've done it here they've had a great first half and a dreadful second half Dragons bring the ball back three and a half to go until when the Saints go marching in reverberates around this stadium do you think they'll play Louis Armstrong's version I hope so I hope they do Tell you what, it'll get a few get they a few runs during the, the evening early won't. part of the morning. <laughs> they probably won't. <laughs> oh, Sashmo. <laughs> That'll be good. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't have known much about rugby. Now the Dragons move the ball to the right side very quickly. And here's Nightingale. He's flying down the right wing. He's going to step up. He stands around. He runs around Minicello. He's away from Minicello. He can't get away from the cover. Minicello comes again and puts him down. And then a flop from Nuasala that should go should be a penalty. Doesn't happen. Ball comes away to Jeremy Smith. They've got to play they send the, the ball to the left. And then, would you believe, there's an intercept. And taking the intercept is, is Perrett. And as we saw against the, the uh, Gold Coast, Perrick isn't very quick. He's have easily at, rounded up. Have but, a look at the, the, the speed. Have a look at the speed that the Dragons will get back even at this late yeah, there's stage. There's a rooster down here. There's a Jason Riles. Penalty's gone to the Roosters. They've got the ball. Kenny Dow's got it. But Warren, what you're saying, have a look at this. What you're saying, every Dragon's back already, isn't it? Yeah, well, actually, that by their standards, that was a slow recovery. But they had about four white jumpers around Perrick. And now Linnett goes for the ball, and he knocks the ball on. It's picked up by, by uh, Bo Scott. He loses the ball, and it's comedy capers at the end of the game, and that's a sad sight, as, J as uh, Jason Riles has helped from the field, and he's got a leg injury that obviously uh, means that he needs assistance to get off the field. The man who gave everything to the St George Illawarra side. He won't feel the unhappiest rooster out there. There's a couple of his mates out there, especially Mark Gaznier, that I dare say he'll have a celebratory well, with at some stage during the next week. Here is St. Wayne. That's what the war is for. Well, 80% of the crowd are happy. And they've done it. You've got to give it to him. He certainly knows a bit about winning grand finals. The ball is taken by the Dragons. 35 out in their own goal line. Seven grand final victories.
It's amazing achievement. It is amazing. It's a tough game, but to do it with another club... Well, I think, I think the fact that he's come to Sydney and done one, I think that that is, is marvellous because it's taken away any, you know, any suspicion that he only got him up there. Plenty said he should have got ten up there. But uh, it's easily said, they're pretty hard to get into, let alone win them. Well, you know about that. Here we go. Hornby has the ball and he plays the front man, Jeremy Smith, on the wraparound. It goes to sound. Back it goes to Hornby. He floats it over the top. It comes to Gaznia. And Gaznia gets on the outside of his man. He's sprinting down the right side of the field. He puts a grubber kick in. Minicello gets back. Minicello has to have a little kick at it. And he puts it over the dead ball line. That'll be all she wrote. The Dragons will win the Premiership. 32 points to eight. They won't restart the action. The Dragons, the minor Premiers, are the Premiers in 2010. For the first time since 79, the Dragons have won the Grand Final. So the Dragons won their first Premiership as a joint venture, defeating the Roosters 32-8. Fullback Darius Boyd was awarded the Clive Churchill Medal while his mentor Bennett collected what was his seventh premiership as a coach. The next season, the pair announced they would be leaving to link up with Newcastle in 2012, and their departure signalled the end of the Dragons' revival, with the club having now missed the past two finals series. The Roosters hit lean times again in 2011 and 2012 to finish in the bottom half of the competition in both seasons and this led to Smith losing his job with the club opting for Trent Robinson as coach. Under Robinson the Roosters won this year's minor premiership and their attention is now focused on Sunday's grand final which you'll be able to hear on ABC local radio, Grandstand Digital and streaming at abc.net.au slash sport. Our coverage from Homebush will begin at 10am at daylight savings time with the grand final broadcast to kick off at 7pm. So we hope you can join us for what promises to be a blockbuster clash between the Roosters and the Sea Eagles. Bye for now.